if you don't like testing your product, most likely your customers won't like to test it either. Anonymous. Unit tests. What are they? They are methods that instantiate a small portion of your application and verify its behavior independently from other parts. In other words, you take a small part of your code and test it in a small function separately. This part of development often gets skipped, which leads to customers testing your software and poor user experience. However, if you write proper tests, you can be sure that those small but important snippets of code will just work. A typical unit test has three phases – arrange, act and assert. Arrange is creating proper conditions for the unit test to run in, for example instancing an object. Act is giving that object some input or data. And assert is checking whether the output data turned out to be as expected. Sounds easy, right? Well, when it may sound easy to write mediocre unit tests, Writing a good unit test requires more knowledge and following a so-called first principle of unit testing. Unit tests should be fast. Tests should not discourage you from running them because of how slow they are. Every time you change your code, you are likely to run tests for it, so they should waste no more than a couple of seconds of your time. Unit tests should be independent, meaning that no test should depend on the execution of the previous one. Each unit test should give the same result, no matter if you run it alone or in a whole test suite. Unit tests should be repeatable, they must produce the same result each time you run it. This way, when the test fails, you will be certain that the problem is inside of the code, not the test. Unit tests should be self-validating and tell you if the test passed or not. You don't need to check each test as it is very time-consuming they should tell you if they passed. Unit tests should be timely, meaning that they should be written at the right time in the right place in development. Writing a test too late may cause unnecessary errors and costly problems in development, and writing a test too soon can just slow down the development. That's why this part mostly depends on what kind of development you choose for your project, test-driven development or some different kinds. With all of this theory out of the way, let's boot up Python and its default library for unit testing. Unit test. Hey, before you start practicing, I want to play a game with you. Press that like and subscribe button right now, and if you don't find this video useful by the end of it, you can always unsubscribe, remove the like, and even take one back. Enjoy the practice. Alright, so before we start coding, I just want to quickly say that all of the snippets you will be seeing right now are available on my GitHub down below, so go ahead and clone them for yourself, and then get to work. Alright, so we have two examples today. The first example is here. As you can see, we've got a function power, power num in the file power.py, which we are gonna be testing. A quick overview of the function. This function raises the number you give it to the power you give it. The number can only be int or float, otherwise type error, and the power can be only int, otherwise type error, and the number can be more or equal than zero, otherwise type error. And we're gonna be testing this in the module testpower.py. The module name is as it should be, test underscore and the name of the module that you are testing, you should always name it like that. And uh, what is in this test module? Well, at first, as you can see, we import the module unit test and then we import the function from the modules that, that we want to test. And then we initialize a class called test power. It's called like that obviously because we're testing the function power here. And in the parentheses, you need to give it unit test dot test case for it to understand that it is a test. It's, it's a case of unit tests. And every function in this class is gonna be a single unit test. So let's go and see the functions. The first function is test power int. And as the name suggests, we are gonna be testing this function when the power of the function is an integer. Unit test module provides you with things that are called asserts. Right now at your screen, you can see all of the asserts that are in the unit test module. They're pretty obvious, you just type 
self.assert equal, for example, here, because we are testing the equality of numbers. And this is the first number, which is, should be equal to the second number. So 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. That's the first test. The second test is we are testing the power as float. So basically we have a float number to the power of 2, which should be 2.25. So now that we have our two first tests ready, let's go to the down, like down to the file, and see that there is a line if name equals main. We run the unit test using the command unit test.main. So let's run the Python file. As you can see, it gave us an information that the two tests were run in 0.0 seconds, and these two dots here represent that the tests passed. If the test did not pass, you, you will be seeing capital F letters over here. And it tells us that everything is okay and everything, well, completed. But what if you don't want to run your test module from the file as a module? What if you want to run it as a script? Well, you can do that. You can type in python hyphen m. Wait, I, I forgot the command. Oh yeah, unit test and there's the name of the, the files that you want to test. In our case, it's gonna be testpower.py. And if we type enter, as you can see, you, you can run it as a script. It works all the same. If you want more information, you can put slash v here, which means verbose, which means it's going to give you more information on the each unit test that's passing. This is, by the way, my favorite mode because it literally tells you which test passed and which didn't. And there's also a third option to run unit test from the terminal, and it's to type unit tests discover. This line is going to automatically discover all of the modules that start with test. That's why it's essential to name all of your modules test and then the modules that you want to test. All right, so now let's get back to the other unit tests I have here. So here we are basically testing errors. As you can see, testing errors is a bit different because what you're gonna have to do is type with self assert raises type error. So basically state which error do you expect to get with this line and then run the lines that should give you that exact error. As you can see here, we are testing for a list as a number and in this function we are testing for float as a power and in this function we are testing for a negative number well, as a number and uh, if we remember from our code here, right here these all should give us type errors so now let's try to run this code we're going to run it in the verbose mode because that's much more fun as you can see, all of the tests passed that's great, but what if the tests don't pass? That's why we got these three options right here. So here we are going to be testing for zero as a number and a positive power. So it basically should give us zero. That's right. And here, let's actually comment this line before. We test for zero as a number and a zero as a power. Now if we run these two tests. Oops, sorry, I did not save the file. Uh, as you can see, we get a, a fail. So if we go up here, we actually aren't gonna see those dots that were there because we're running it as a verbose. So you can see that all of the tests are okay, except for this test, test for zero as number and zero as power, which failed. Why did it fail? It's because actually there's a mistake in the test, in this situation, and zero to the power of zero is equal to one and not zero. This line actually tells you just that. And as you can see here, it types failed and the amount of failures. All right, that's good. But what if you have not a failure, but an error in your tests? Let's try that out. As you can see, we got one failure now and one error. That's because this function test for zero as number and negative power tries to raise zero to the negative power, which is like impossible. And it raises, as we can see here, zero division error. So by this test, we understood that there is a critical flaw in our function and that it does not account for zero division error. And we can do two things right now. It's either type this here, zero division error, or go to our function and try to counter that by raising type error 
when the number is zero and the power is negative. And basically that's how all of the unit testing works. And uh, if you understood everything that I just said in this video, there's an example too for you. Here there's a function called square proceeding and your job is to write your own unit tests for it in the style that we wrote over here. Your job is to understand what does the function do and write precise tests for it because understanding what the function does is very important for writing tests because obviously we're not gonna write tests for a function without knowing what the heck is happening. Thanks for watching! Like, comment, follow me on GitHub and subscribe for more coding!